Good morning. It's April 18th, 2018. It's 10 o'clock, and all three county commissioners are here. I ask that we rise for a moment of silent meditation and then a pledge to the flag. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good morning. It's not snowing, so we're excited about that. Okay, consents and approvals? Good morning. Good morning. We have nine exonerations for 7,595.12. Vouchers for General County, 245.541.94. 911, 9,887.76. Chestnut Ridge Park, 177. <coughs> Camp Muffley, 328.78. Mason Dixon Park, 1,441.60. Recreation Levy, 82,538.34. Assessor's Valuation, 5,537.82. Payroll Fund, $25. Morgantown Industrial TIF, 29,164.18. Fire levy 237 40531. Purchasing card vouchers, General County 40,336.52. Home confinement 20451. Mason Dixon Park 49089. Assessor's valuation 9649. A voucher total of 653 176.14. We have budget revisions, uh, in house transfers for general fund for jail reimbursable 702 and jail non-reimbursable 703, state approval, general fund for the county commission, prosecuting attorney, jail reimbursable, control, uh, central garage, capital projects, state approval for Cole Severance Fund for community centers, position vacancies for boards and authorities, the Western Board of Zoning Appeals, Planning Commission, Cheat Road, or Cheat View PSD, River Road PSD, Mountain Line Transit Authority, and the Mon County Development Authority. Fiduciary orders for April the 14th, 2018. Fourth, fourth quarter status report, Fiduciary Commissioner George Armistead. And then there's a separate fiduciary item that we need to approve separately. Okay. Move for approval. Second. Pop moves and second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Now the separate fiduciary. Okay, statement. there's a, uh, in your fiduciary folder, I think it's already been passed on, um, is a, a, a request for a, a hearing for the for the estate of Susanna Messenger, um, there uh, somebody is petitioning to, for the removal of the executor. Uh, we're going to set that for May the second uh, at ten o'clock. Do I have a motion to set that date? So moved. Uh, second with discussion. Okay. I'm probably moved and second. <coughs> have discussion. Um, the motion for his hearings before us. Yes. Why wouldn't this go through our, not just directly to our fiduciary commissioner? Because it's the removal of an executor. Okay. I believe that's protocol. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to go. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. It passes. We have set that. Okay. Introduction of any new employees and personnel chain. Okay. Seeing none. At this time, we will have comments from the public. Is there anyone who would like to discuss anything from the public? Sure. Howdy, my name is Jason Whipke. I work at the Clay Patel Community Health Center in Blacksville, West Virginia. Um, as you know, we have the, the ambulance stationed here. Um, and I gave you folks an invitation to come out. We're gonna have an open house, bring in the public, have some screenings for, um, for different uh, health conditions and whatnot. Um, some things for kids. Um, but we, I, I also wanted to check and see if, if there was kind of a status update on the, the ambulance rotation. I know that uh, you guys were working with Mon EMS on potentially adding the health team uh, to the, the call rotation. And I was wondering if there was an update on that. Does anyone want to? Well, quick question. I'm sorry. Are you just representing yourself as a citizen or are you representing a group? The, the, the organization. So uh, Clay Patel Health Service Associate, correct? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I just that. got this. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Um, and no, we're still working back and forth. Uh, we had a meeting with Mon Health, and uh, they 
reached out to W. There's been some correspondence back and forth. When I say W, I mean the health team. Right. Um, that's probably been about, what, a week and a half ago? Mm -hmm. So they're still back and forth talking, but we're work, we're moving forward. The health and, I, mean, I guess the issue is the health team has been given an invitation to join the rotation. It is, yes. uh, if you want to put it in the vernacular, the ball is now in their court. It is up to them to first sign the agreement. Which they haven't at this time. Which they have not yeah. at this time. And okay. in this, there's a lot more to this process. Yes. That, but we're 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 keeping on top. So even after this uh, agreement signed, we're still going to have some continuing discussions. But that's that's what we know right now. In regard to answer your question. Okay. Is is the county commission in, intending to to rebid the contract when it's up? The I guess it would be next July. A lot of those things are still on. We're still working through those issues, and we have not made a decision on that yet. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to speak? Okay. Seeing none. I thought Ben was getting up. <laughs> oh, someone getting up? No, I thought Ben was getting oh. up. <laughs> <laughs> he got halfway out of the Oh, seat. okay. <laughs> Sorry, um, Colleen Coon of Grants. Good morning, Colleen. Good morning. Um, I have two requests for reimbursements. They're both for the JJDP. The first one is the voices two in the amount of $2,084.10. And the second one is the DMC grant in the amount of $5,514.06. Move for approval. Second. Been properly moved and second. All those in favor for me to sign, say aye. 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 Okay, it passes. Okay. At this time, we're very fortunate. We have a special situation right now, a proclamation. And... Did you want to say something, or should I turn it over to? I don't have it. I think, oh, uh, we, well, we Delegate yeah. Statler has House it. of Delegate Member Joe Statler, would you like to come forward and introduce anyone you would like and feel comfortable? Yes. Oh, thank you. Well, I ask Ethan uh, to pass out a uh, copy of the proclamation to thank each you. member. And I would like to thank you for allowing us to get on the agenda at a short notice uh, to bring this forward uh, to, you know, ASIL. He was just such a, a great public servant. Uh, you know, we talk about that. He spent his life doing it. A lot of us come into it later. We spent a, a job in the you know working world, but Asel, basically, even his job was as a public servant. I remember in 1968, 69, in that area, I was in high school, and uh, Asel came out to Claybatel High School down at the Ag area, and you knew then, you know, it was anything that you ask, he was going to help you with. And even as students, uh, he spent that whole time through. How many years, uh, Ed, that he worked with you in the 4-H and the rest that, uh, out there? And, and those sales, lots of nights we were up there until 1 or 2 o'clock in the morning at sales on the western end when, hmm. when ASOL was out there. And, you know, he just gave his time. He'd come early in the morning and was there all day long. He'd done all that. And then, of course, when he uh, retired from the extension service, he chose to go into the county commission and go into the public life and I think he done a great job at that also and I believe it was about 12 years that he served yes. uh, in the county commission and chose to give that up and lo and behold what does he do I don't believe it and I'd have to ask Mrs. Kennedy but I don't ever recall him golfing prior to that <laughs> I don't think he ever had time to stop to enjoy anything he tried to do that and he tried to work on the farm and keep that up, but he was always even, if he had a field of hay down, you know, somebody would call, he left his own hay, lay, and go to help those people. That's the type of man Asel was. And like I said, that uh, you know, how do you replace a guy like that that's out there? So when he retires, he goes out at full force into golfing. I mean, I never seen a guy that would take over and go into that. Personally, I'm not much of a golfer, don't care much for it, and uh, <laughs> don't want to chase that ball around. But Asel just loved it and went out. So everything he'd done in life, he'd done it with a great gusto. And he give it 100% to everything that he'd done and, and the way he served. And that's the way that he lived his life. And so it was with great pleasure today the governor asked uh, if he sent up the proclamations to the family that if I would uh, issue those out. So with the permission of the commission, I will read the short proclamation and ask Mrs. Kennedy and Mrs. Lehman to come forward uh, that we can present these. Uh, 
I love this pen she has on. That was Azel's like, first running. Like if you can remember, well, that's you right. can, very few yes. can remember, but we was all worried about the whole world oh, was shut down stop. because of the computers. <laughs> yes, and only Azel could think of it. You know, everybody it was when it rolled around the year 2000, everything was going to shut down. And it was simple, Y2K, yes to Kennedy. So, <laughs> from the state of West Virginia, Jim Justice Governor, a memorial be it hereby known to all that sincerely, that sincerest sympathy is extended to the family of the Honorable Asel Lee Kennedy. Given this day, under the great seal of the state of West Virginia, the sixth day of April in the year of the Lord, 2018. That's a little small reading for me to read. <laughs> Jim Justice, Governor. So, Ms. Kennedy, I'd like to present that to you. And Mrs. Lehman, you also. And we have copies for the rest of the family. And if, if the commission is okay, if you would like to say something. Yes, please. please. Um, <clears throat> thank you so much for this honor. It's it's. Uh, Asa would have loved it, and it was very, very kind of you to do this, and my fam family will love this too, and thanks a bunch. Thank you. I will say that I'm not so sure Asa would have loved it. Asa <laughs> would never like to have any fanfare for anything, so, but I thank you for your time. Thank you. Did you want, did, since we should say something, I mean, go ahead. You know, there, there's so much that could be said. Uh, you know, yeah, the years, he actually did teach a golfing class at 4-H camp. Okay, so he was in training, uh, even even before. Uh, but the years, you know, the years that I spent with Asel uh, were were precious to me. Uh, I learned so much. Uh, that's what I describe him as. He was a great teacher. He was an individual who uh, you could profit just simply looking at the example that he set on his work ethic and all that he did for the community, not not only in commission but through 4-H through the extension office. Uh, the you know the extension is a outreach of education, and if anything defines that individual, that was it. He was a educator. He taught well. Mm -hmm. uh, Miss Kennedy, uh, I, I met you for the first time at the funeral home, and um, as I told you, I've only met Asel twice. Well, I've only met him once, and then I had a follow-on phone call with him, uh, but. Uh, just in that short time I was able to interact with him uh, I, I learned so much and I learned to really you know he kind of just garnered respect when you when you were talking to him he had such a command of of, of everything he talked about and that's uh, you know no matter what the subject and I really appreciate the short amount of time I was able to you know uh, gain from him gain knowledge we sat down I think we had about a two-hour uh, lunch, and I walked away from that knowing more than I knew about commission before I, you know, in the year and a half running. But I really appreciate that. And uh, one of the things that I'd really like to thank you for is I know when we do these jobs, uh, one of the most important things to me doing this job is making sure that I'm still taking care of family. But I know they're giving up my time to allow me to serve, and I know you gave up 12 years to allow him to serve. And uh, I'm not sure whether you would have had any say in it or not, but I really do sincerely thank you for your time that you've given him to the, to the county because he's left a deep mark on this county. And, uh, you know, a lot of that appreciation goes to obviously to him, but to you and your family for, for giving up that time. And one thing I want to say about um, golf, as you guys are talking about golf, Bob told me a story they used to take to Bob Bell, the other former commissioner. They used to take a lot of trips to Charleston. And he said, Asel's mind was always, always working. And he'd see different piece of property. And he's like, man, that you know, it'd be a nice farm. You know, or, so years later, they were traveling somewhere and he was looking off and he's like, man, that'd be a nice golf course. <laughs> and he looked at him and said, well, your priorities have really changed. <laughs> so, um, uh, again, I really sincerely appreciate you coming here and uh, thanks for your service to this county. I have two quick stories. One, I was fortunate to work with Azel. Judge Starcher, Tony Brill, Mrs. Bader with the Youth Services Center. That's been something that Azel had a great passion besides farming, and he really has helped so many uh, children for temporary 
housing, and it's been a wonderful program, and it continues. So, I, and you know, I, I know the people at the Youth Service Center, you know, pass on their condolences too. And the other thing, I was very fortunate. The one thing I did bring from Philadelphia when I came to WVU was an alarm clock, clock radio, and. As soon as my alarm would go off, it was Ask Hazel. So I got to know everything that was going on in the county because of that program that lasted for years. So again, that's, that's my two recollections. And again, we appreciate it and we are sorry, but he has left a lasting impact and we thank you for that. Correspondence? Uh, we have received a, <clears throat> a letter from uh, Jimmy Smith um, resigning from the uh, River Road PSD um, for uh, personal obligations. Okay. Just, Do we want to move to accept? We did move to accept. We'll take up the yeah. resignation, unfortunately. Yes, it, uh, it is unfortunate. Uh, I'll second that. Yeah, it's been moved and properly second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Unfortunately, with the word. Um, I received two. I have one more. Oh, yeah, one more. Yes. Okay. Um, we received the annual report from the Mon County Planning Commission for uh, fiscal year 2017 2018, and that will be on file here in the commission office if anybody wants to look. And I'm sure they have a copy down there as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. And as was stated earlier, we just received an invitation from the Clay Patel Health Service Association to join them, open house at Clay Patel Community Health Center, Saturday, April 28th, from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m., and all three of us are invited. And the other, we just received an invitation this morning for Monday, April 23rd, from noon to 1 o'clock at the Bruce McClyman's Conference Center at the J.W. Ruby Memorial Hospital. It is concerning West Virginia children's and families and promoting Medicaid and the children's health insurance program, and they would like us to stop by and be a part of that. So I, I gave that to Carrie, but I'll just give you that too. So that's also. That yeah, that's what that program, yeah. And they like all three of us. And it, they told me point <coughs> blank it wasn't political. It was, to, <laughs> it was to promote the program, so that's why I asked. New, new business, one, to consider sponsorship for the Cheat Lake Rotary's 2018 Flags for Heroes program. Do I have a motion for that? Motion to approve? Yes. Second. Second. Uh, basically, we did this last year where up to $1,000 was given by the county commission for those workers in the county who wanted to pledge a, a hero program. And we thought it went extremely well and the, the community liked it. and. Uh, the county liked it, so I'd like to continue that too. A dollar amount? It was a thousand dollars. Okay. Yeah, no more than a thousand. Yes. You want to include that in your motion? Yeah. As amended. Okay. And second. <laughs> All those in favor say aye. 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 It passes. Thank you. Consideration of appointments to the Mon County Planning Commission and the Cheat Lake Public Service District. We have several reappointments, uh, correct? Yes. Um, we'll do the Planning Commission first. Mm -hmm. uh, these are reappointments. Um, they had uh, expired terms for Michael Mills and Barton Lohr. Um, they both are wishing to continue to serve. Um, we have a few more people that we're waiting on responses from to see if they are willing. And we, we still need applicants even if we reappoint these these folks. So uh, move for approval. They are both active members. Second. Good prop moves and second. All those in favor say aye. 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 <coughs> Passes. Okay. And we also have uh, Chief UPSD. Uh, Glenn Stadden has been serving for years and he wishes to continue um, all for his uh, uh, term. So. Uh, move for approval. Glenn has done an excellent job. Second. Prop move and second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Do we have, okay. Um, three, to consider for approval requisition number six for the University Town Center EODD Special District Excise Tax Revenue Refunding and Improvement Bond Series 2017 uh, and Administrative Expense Fund. Okay, this is for 15263.15, and this is in, uh, expenses incurred by Steptoe and Johnson uh, right. as part of their administrative functions. Move for approval. Second. Pop, move and second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Do we have any other new business? No. Okay. Any reports from any elected officials? Oh, we do. Oh. 
<laughs> Great. <laughs> I, I will say that I didn't come to do this today, but it brought it up when you talked earlier about the EMS services here in uh, the county. I serve as chair of the fireman EMS uh, on the house side, and we've been looking at our volunteer services out there that protects most of the state of West Virginia. And I was quoted last night that we have lost about 70 a uh, EMS services across the state in a year. So I just wanted to make it known that we're very fortunate in this area uh, the, with the coverage we have, and that's not a uh, given everywhere in the state of West mm -hmm. Virginia. So in June, or I'm sorry, in May in interims, I've asked the committee, uh, the joint committee, to possibly look at the EMS services and some of the shortcomings and what's going on with those services. And hopefully we can get a handle on what all is needed and what's happening. And of course, as we know across this state, the drug issue that's been going on is really wreaking some havoc on those services. Uh, you know, with uh, going out and serving that area and the Narcan that they have to give out. And the cost of it has went from, a, I think about two years ago, it was about $8 an <coughs> to over $48 they have to, to pay to, to replace that. So it is going to be an issue. So I would like to, to offer that if uh, anyone here in the county or any of the services that has any suggestions that they would like for that committee to listen to, and one of them is, I don't know if you realize it or not, but basically the state puts very little money into the EMS services. So we do have some funds that we help the volunteer fire services out, but very little money goes into EMS. So we're looking at that also as to how and what we need to do for those services. So thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Well, I wanted to come forth here because each year we do our field review and we like to bring it to the commission so we make it public on where we're at and what we'll be doing for the rest of this uh, tax year. Uh, currently, we are in Granville, Osage, and Westover, which is District 6 for Granville, 16 for Osage, and 19 for Westover. So that's where staff currently are right now. Uh, for the staff that are out in the field, they will have some type of assessor attire on, as we've had in the mm -hmm. past, either a yellow vest or a polo shirt. The vehicles, which are the county with a signature on the side. So for the public, if they see anything different, please feel free to call the office, as they have in the past. Uh, we do have a, three other districts that we will be seeing after these three are currently done, and that will be 4th uh, and 5th Ward and Morgan. So we have six on the docket for uh, tax year 2019. New construction is going countywide, so as it occurs, staff are out <coughs> doing that. But for the residential districts, those are the six. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any questions? Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Thank you for the report. We do appreciate that. And we'll get that out. <coughs> and I think we have an election coming up. Is that correct? I hear it. <coughs> Morning. Morning. Um, yes, I just wanted to remind you that we will be conducting public testing today at 1 o'clock at the Election Center. And early voting begins next week on Wednesday, April the 25th. And we'll right. run through Saturday, May the 5th. Election Day, of course, is Tuesday, May the 8th. But I do want to, while I'm here, um, express my uh, deepest sympathy to the uh, Mrs. Kennedy and uh, Asel's family. When I became county clerk in 2007, I was telling Mrs. Kennedy earlier, um, I credit Asel with teaching me a lot about my job. <laughs> Because ASOL um, asked a lot of questions. And by him asking those questions, I would not stop until I found the answer. And so I give him a lot of credit. But one, the, one of the very first things that I had a, the fortune to do is go with ASOL to an eighth grade career fair at the VOTEC. Well, Mon County Technical Education Center now, we called it the VOTEC when I was in school. But at that eighth grade career fair, I took our election equipment, and ASIL was there. And I remember ASIL had two index cards. And he ha on one index card, he wrote something, and he turned it over on the table. And he wrote something on the second card and turned it over. So being the curious person that I was, I went over and I said, what's on your index cards? And he said, the secret to success. And I said, the secret to success? And he said, yeah, turn, turn the cards over. So on one card it said, 
earn more than you spend. And on the other one, it said, spend less than you earn. <laughs> and I have never <laughs> forgot that. So, again, our deepest sympathies from the county. ASIL was such a true steward, a good steward of the county's money and, and a very yes. good, dedicated public servant. Thank you. Thank you very much, Gary. Any other elected officials? Seeing none, uh, we'll have reports from the county commissioner. Sean? Okay. Um, Last week, after uh, and this is what's been going on since last meeting, uh, last Thursday I had the Development Authority MAEP uh, Joint Strategy meeting, uh, and the rest of the week was kind of quiet uh, after we had finished up with the the budget and the, the, the levy process. Uh, this week I had uh, lunch with the assessor on Monday. Uh, yesterday we had our special meeting to lay the levy, uh, and then we also had our follow up meeting with the Joe. Bill working group uh, mm -hmm. in uh, the, that particular meeting was very productive. I think we're moving in uh, a couple good directions. This morning I had our regular uh, every two week uh, IT team meeting, and this afternoon, as uh, the clerk indicated, uh, we are um, going to have election uh, testing. The rest of the week, tomorrow, I have a uh, Milan Park board meeting and an Alliance executive uh, board meeting in the afternoon. Um, but other than that, I just want to state my um, schedule, and I can't do justice to what's already been said mm -hmm. uh, uh, about the service of uh, Asel Kennedy. So I'll just leave it at that. Thank you. Well, Friday, I uh, was out of town, uh, but I did manage to buy some ham bacon or some bacon and eggs, uh, courtesy of Delegate Statler. Uh, it's unfortunately, it, it was always at the end of uh, March that this was scheduled, and uh, I had a previous commitment to, to be somewhere else. So fortunately, uh, I called Joe, and uh, he was able to oblige me, my champion. Uh, I don't know what place I got on my, uh, on my eggs or my bacon, but uh, they're still in the bag there. But thank you, Joe. I appreciate the efforts. Uh, I would ask people to pay attention to the elected process, the, the upcoming election. It's important. Uh, you should study your candidates. Um, don't take for granted uh, the right that you have to the freedom of an election. It's really important uh, as we do that public testing today. Uh, on Monday, uh, the 4-H Camp Board met and discussing the upcoming season with the newly elected uh, director, Misty. And last Wednesday, the Commission, the Planning Commission did meet. Uh, this was for a public hearing. And it was on a land use variance in the West Run Planning District. And this variance was granted, uh, and it was will be passed on to this commission for a public hearing. So we will probably uh, request that this public hearing um, be set, and then a vote will be taken by the commission as to whether or not to actually grant the variance. It passed, I believe, four to one. I did abstain from the vote because, obviously, I would be voting uh, here, but did listen, of course, to the public comment. Uh, primarily, the public comment circ circled around, uh, actually, roads uh, that, and this is an issue in the area, but it is not actually a reason that can be allowed to deny the variance. In other words, the roads are not a consideration in this uh, in this issue, so that the public does understand. Even though roads are an issue, uh, the land use is uh, is separate from that of the roads that exist. So that's what I have. Thank you. I've, I just have two. Received a letter from the pedestrian board meeting, and it said your contribution. Contributions resulted in a very productive and concrete set of suggestions. We are greatly encouraged by the results, which will help focus efforts to improve pedestrian safety on the WVU campus and the Morgantown area community. In terms of next steps, the planning team will be working with subject matter experts in our community to further analyze the results and create an action plan. We expect this work to occur over the next several weeks, at which time we will share the results with you. And the other is I attended a meeting as per uh, we all agreed to the Westover City Council. I wanted to hear the presentation of Mr. Bruffy and the bus, new bus changes and bus depot. And two issues came out of that. And the first was, and I thought it was a good issue, I recommended that Westover write a letter to the MMPO to suggest that they want to, on the MMPO guidelines, is the sidewalk to be 
built at the end of that road along, was it Holland Avenue, is it, or, and so see if they could expedite that. So that was one recommendation they're going to do. And the other they asked us, and I would like permission, that we could write a letter to the city of Morgantown, Westover, uh, the bus system, and us to have a meeting to discuss the future of the of where we are heading with the bus situation and also possible stops in the area of downtown Morgantown. So that is something that I thought was, was important and, and we have so many bus riders from the county coming to the city of Morgantown and right now they have no place to drop them off. And or pursuant to that they are sure. having public hearings. And they are having yes. public hearings too. I think one actually is today and I know one's Friday. I okay. Think Friday, Friday I think, the, I'm just going off my memory now, Friday I think is yeah. at the Senior Mons at 1 o'clock. Right. But there are scheduled public hearings. I think hearings. there's four public hearings. Yes. So I think, it, I think this would be good just so we would keep a of what's going on, and, and I think there really clearly is a concern about the drop-off points in downtown Morgantown. So I think all four of us are going to, I'd like to get together and let's just so keep abreast on that issue. Yeah. And in fact, I was looking at uh, Delegate Statler, I would, I would like to open it up to you since you've been involved so much in it. So because you deal a lot with the Western End, I think it'd be real important if that would be okay and add you to that list. So if that's okay. We don't need a motion, it's just that, no. okay, fine. Uh, anything else? Move okay. to adjourn. Second. Probably move to adjourn. We're out of here.